All right, this is gonna be how to do a factorial ANOVA in Jamobi. Now, so far we've gone through and compared how you do different methods in PSPP and in Jamobi, and a lot of them, they've been really, really similar. This one is totally different. Um, so I would still recommend you watch the PSPP videos because I discuss a lot of the logic behind what we're doing in our data set setup, but the controls for um, a factorial ANOVA in Jamobi are just completely, completely different. So I'm gonna scooch myself out of the way here. All right, so we have our data filled in. I'm still working with this pretend data set where I wanted to see how playing music in a classroom could affect test scores. And I played around with classical music, fan favorite music, and ambient music. And for this example, we're also considering two additional factors. We're considering the age of the student, were they Gen X, Gen Z, or Millennial? And we're considering the mood that they were in when they came in to take their, their quiz. Were they in a high mood or a low mood? Because remember, the purpose of a factorial ANOVA is we're asking, do these things interact with each other? Not just is what classroom you're in significant, not just is your age or your mood significant, but when you piece them together, is there a significant combination where if you were in a bad mood and listening to classical music, it was a different effect than if you were in a good mood and listening to classical music. So that's our goal here. So you're going to click on your analysis tab. And I kind of cheated and played around with this. And you're going to come to ANOVA. Jamobi actually puts it in a logical place, unlike PSTP. So you're going to click on just ANOVA. You'll notice it doesn't say factorial ANOVA anywhere. You're just gonna click on ANOVA. And that's gonna bring this up. Now, just like when we were doing our one-way ANOVA, we are going to tell it that, our, again, our dependent variable, what we're interested in measuring is our test score. Remember, what is affecting what test score? And our fixed factors, what are the things that we want to see if there was an impact? Let's start by looking at um, class and age, because if you watched the last video, you know that those did not have a significant interaction. So I just want you to see what the chart looks like when there's not a significant interaction. So let's come down here, and you can see that class had a statistically significant effect by itself. Age has a statistically significant effect by itself. If we were gonna to go to a one-way ANOVA, we would see an effect for age. But class and age together do not have a statistically significant effect. So how we would interpret this is to say that the impact of the type of music that is being listened to on the quiz, that effect of the music is not differing statistically significantly if someone is millennial, Gen X, or Gen Z, okay? So the impact of classical music is not different if you're Gen X listening to classical music versus if you're Gen Z listening to classical music. So this interaction is not significant. So for this, we would stop right here. But I'm gonna show you what your options are whenever you do have a significant interaction. Again, if you watched the last video, you already know that I set up this data in a way where the interaction between class and mood would be significant. So you can see here on this example, class is still statistically significant. It always has been. Mood on its own is not significant. So we can't isolate if someone was in a good mood or a bad mood when they took the quiz, there was a difference. That by its own does not matter. However, what we see here is that class and mood together, that's what this little asterisk means as we're looking at the interaction effect. Class and mood together are statistically significant, P of 0.01. So now we know that we can explore this further. The great thing about Jamobi, one thing I love about the software is we don't have to go back and do three different commands to, to find what we're looking for, like what we do in PSPP. So I'm going to scoot myself over here so I'm not taking up any screen space that we need for this. So let's go down here to our next one. Now we can look at post hoc tests directly in this. And there's there's a couple of different ways to do this. If you watched the PSPP video, one thing that you would that you noticed is I first had you make like a chart of means so you can see what the difference is. One of the great things about 
what Jamobi does is it'll tell you the mean difference right here on the chart. So if I come down here to post hoc comparisons for my interactions, what I will see is I have my mean difference marked out for me. It doesn't give me my straight means. I'll do that here in just a minute. But it does show me an interaction that here was how big of a difference there was in between the different scores. So if I compared low mood listening to classical music with high mood listening to classical music, there was a mean difference in scores of about negative 2.9. And we can go through um, and look at these for all the different ones. Now, there are ways to actually compute the, 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 the significance of these and do some corrections and all that. Again, that's beyond the scope of what I'm wanting you to get out of this class. But the really helpful piece of this is with this tool down here called Estimated Marginal Means. Now, when you first open this and run your analysis, all of these are probably going to be collapsed down if this is your first time using your software, and it's just going to look like this. But so you can open your Estimated Marginal Means. And just, I would recommend checking both of these, the marginal mean plots and the marginal means tables, because that's going to give you the most to work with as you're trying to figure out what, what style works for you to figure out what you're looking at. So over here for your term one, go ahead and move both class and mood over here. And the first thing it's going to give you is a chart, or is a, is a graph, I'm sorry, is a plot, is a visual. And just by looking at this visual, like what we did with our bar charts over on PSPP, you could probably look at this and say, okay, the thing that really seems to be making a difference is whatever this combination is right here. And we can go over here to decipher this and say, okay, so this is the classical music by participants that were in a high mood. And that's how we read this. Uh, the yellow are those that were in a high mood, the blue is those that were in a low mood, and then these are the different categories of music, and these were the test scores. So I can see that my test scores were highest by quite a bit among those who had a high mood and were listening to classical music, whereas all these are overlapping. So I can see that this is probably going to be where I want to focus my attention and figuring out what's different. And so now I can come over here on my chart, and just like we did in our layered compared means function in PSPP, I can see that those who were in a low mood listening to classical music had a mean score of 5.25. Those who were in a high mood listening to classical music had a mean score of 8.167. And so I can see right here in my chart, or in my, yeah, in my, in my table, the same information that I'm seeing in my visual graph here. But if you are a very visual learner, and it's, if you had something that had multiple layers of multiple variables, this can be a really big, a really big help to pinpoint where do you want to start looking. So these are the different ways that you can look at this in Jamobi. And again, this chart up here can just be helpful in terms of deciphering where are my biggest differences seen whenever I'm looking at um, whenever I'm trying to make my comparisons. You can kind of see which of these numbers are, are large enough that would, it would stand out to you. So that is how you, oh, one last, one last tip. One thing that Jamobi does that's really odd is it will enter, it will create your chart backwards to how you put your terms in. So I put in class and then mood, and it did mood first and then class. So if you wanted to reverse these, you would just want to make sure you put in mood first and then class. And that would flip your table for you. So that's just one weird backwards thing that it does. And you can see that that would also reverse your, your visual um, plot, your visual chart, that now it's giving you your bars for your three different classes. The blue is your classical music, the gray is your fan favorites, and the yellow is your ambiance, and it's put your mood down here. So the results are still the same. If I was looking at this, I would still say, okay, this is the thing that's really standing out, is this high mood to classical music. It just broke it up in a different format.
So again, if you are a very visual learner and you make a plot and you're having a hard time kind of visualizing something, maybe just try flipping your terms, see if that helps you be able to decipher it any easier. So that is a factorial analysis in PSPP. And please let me know if you have any questions as you're working through um, the activities in this week's homework module.